The English translation of Las Vegas is The Meadows. Spanish pioneers named this town in the 1830s. It's 1990 and this meadow is a center of vacations, entertainment and sport. Today gymnastics is in the spotlight. New faces like 1990 American Cup champion Kim Zemeskel is tumbling her way to the top spot in the American rankings. She's coached by Bella Caroli. 1989 U.S. Challenge silver medalist Wendy Bruce is here, coached by Kevin and Rita Brown. Bruce was a 1989 all-around champion at the World Team Trials. Mike Racanelli clinched the gold medal in floor exercise at the 89 U.S. Championships. He went on to finish third in the all-around. He's from Ohio State University and has traveled the world for his sport. Tom Schlesinger, a 1988 Olympian and chemistry major at the University of Nebraska, took the silver medal for this performance on the high bar at the U.S. Championships in 1989. He later captured the all-around gold at the Winter Nationals in Colorado. It's head-to-head -head competition, and that means Wendy Bruce of North Lauderdale, Florida, is trying to outscore Jana Reardon of Corolla's Gymnastics in Houston, Texas. This is a first-round pairing in a single elimination tournament. For the men, it will be Nebraska's Tom Schlesinger, an academic All-American, against 17-year-old Robbie Kiefer of Crenshaw Athletic Club in Austin, Texas. A classic matchup of youth challenging experience. The neon strip in Las Vegas invites visitors to test the odds, and it rewards you generously if you win. Coming up next on Sports Channel America, the 1990 U.S. Challenge. Center in Las Vegas, Nevada for the 1990 U.S. Gymnastics Challenge. Hello everyone, I'm Leandra Riley and the U.S. Gymnastics Challenge means there are 12 gymnasts that are going to compete head-to-head. -head. The winners go on, the losers go home. There are six brackets for the men, six brackets for the women. Strategy can mean everything. So here to talk about strategy is 1984 Olympic team captain and gold medalist Peter Vidmar. And let's explain a little bit about the strategy. We don't think of gymnastics and strategy, but in this instance, it counts. There's a definite strategy here because you're going one-on-one -on -one against another gymnast, so we have to decide decide what kind of routines am I going to perform that are going to get me ahead of that other guy and that depends on your seating just like the NCAA basketball tournament here we have 12 gymnasts though and they're competing seated number one against the number 12 seed and the number two seed for example Tom Schlesinger who we'll see tonight against the number 11 seed Robbie Kiefer now Tom's strategy might be to just go out there and be consistent hit my routines and not do anything really wild and crazy but then Robbie might do the opposite. He might say, hey, I've got my work cut out for me. I've got to really go for it. I'm going to throw all I have, and if I don't fall off, if I don't make mistakes, maybe I can knock them off and move into the next one. On the women's side, the same story is true. Number one seed going against number 12, Jenny Esther against Denise Fierro. But down at the bottom, it's Jana Reardon against Wendy Bruce, and that's who we're focusing on. Certainly is. Wendy is one of our veterans, and so Wendy is probably the one that we're expecting to hopefully make it all the way into the final round. But she's going up against Jana Reardon, and Jana is coached by a very famous coach, Bella Caroli. She's only two years in the junior national team, but she's ready to make her move this year. Let's talk a little bit about Wendy Bruce. In 1989, she really had a banner year, but she really hasn't won anything big yet in 1990. But we're only into the beginning of the season now, and I think we can expect some great things from Wendy. She's a very consistent and tough competitor. Of course, in 1989, she won the International Mixed Pairs competition, competed in the World Championships, so we can always expect great things from Wendy Bruce. On the men's side, number two seed, Tom Schlesinger. Tell us a little bit about him. Tom's a very smart gymnast, not only academically, but he really is out there on the floor. He's consistent, he does the right things, and you really can't ever expect him to make mistakes so we probably won't see any tonight all right we'll have to watch out for that now we do have a lot of first round action to recap for you as this day of gymnastics has already gotten underway but we'll be back with our featured matches and that recap after this In Las Vegas, Nevada, let's bring you up to date on what has transpired in the first round matches that have already taken place. Jennifer Mercia lost to Kim Zemeskel by just over a point. Zemeskel is a relative newcomer to the national scene, but her debut campaign in 1990 is filled with gold. Already this year, she has captured the prestigious American Cup. With her win over Mercier, Zemeskel moves on to the second round. Stephanie Woods had a close battle with Gina Jackson in the first round. In fact, the margin of victory in this contest was just one-tenth of a point. Things went a little easier for Shari Knight. 
Four strong performances added up to a more comfortable advantage over Agena Simpkins. For the men, number one seed Mike Racanelli breezed to an almost two-point victory over number 12 seed Dennis Harrison. One of the best events for Racanelli in the first round was the Palma Horse. It's a routine filled with superior difficulty, and we'll see more of Racanelli in round number two. Bob Stoker is the number six seed. He drew a bye in the first round, but he'll be tested in the second round. Number three seed Jeff Lutz had to come from behind in his match against Sumner Darling. And what a rally it was. Lutz advances by nearly a three-point margin. Number four seed John Roethlisberger was never tested by Kerry Houston. Margin of victory in this contest, 3.2. And in the matchup between Dan Zimfer and Chris Cabot, Zimfer prevailed 55.85 to 55.25. There is still one berth remaining in the second round for both the men and the women, and we'll see that contest in just a moment. We are back at the Cashman Field Center here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and our first round matchup between Jana Reardon and Wendy Bruce begins with the vaulting event. This is Jana Reardon. She is a ninth grade student in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, as her hometown, currently resides in Houston to train with Bella Caroli, her coach. At the 1989 U.S. Olympic Festival, which was also the Junior National Championships, she did very well in this event, finishing third on the vault, tenth in the all-around. And I think vault certainly one of her best events, and she's got a lot of power. And it's a good event for her to get started off on. At the American Classic, she was first on vault, and so she is very, very powerful here. And this is a place where she will probably want to make up as many points as possible against Wendy Bruce. Remember, Jana is seated number 11. Wendy Bruce is seated two. And it's a round off on. Layout pulled us off. She dropped her knees down. Didn't quite get the rotation on her. Now, as you know, in women's vaulting, you, you have one more chance. And so if this was a men's competition, of course, they, they just get that one shot. This needs to get a little bit more aggressive. And she twists a little bit soon, right off of the horse, and as a result, when she comes back down, she just needs to get that little extra power. Her chest is coming up, but she was just a little bit too low. Let's take a look again. She gets a pretty good lift off the horse. She twists right after touching the horse. Maybe she could have got a little bit more of a lift. She's a little bit too low and has to drop those knees down. Now she will get a second opportunity to vault. Of the two vaults that she executes, the one with the highest score is the one that will matter. 9.2 is the first score, so she has quite a bit of room for improvement. And you know, in a team competition, uh, if you don't do well, maybe the rest of the team can make it up for you, but here it's just one on one. She's got to do it much, much, much better. better. 14 years of age, will graduate high school in 1993. She was a lot faster that time. Right in the right sweet spot on the board. Opens up nice and soon. She can see the ground soon enough that she can zero in on the, on the floor. Had to take that step back. It's a bit of a deduction. I think her hand position on the horse was much better this time, too. She got more propulsion. Right on top of the horse. You could tell she was a lot more aggressive on that one as well. And the second vault received a higher score than the first vault, needless to say, because not only did she look better in the pre-flight, but she landed much more cleanly, not having to drop to her knees. 9.725 is the score we've been told for Jana Reardon's second vault. That is the score that will carry. 9.725, and that's the number that Wendy Bruce, her challenger, will try to beat. Wendy Bruce, born in Plainview, now lives in North Lauderdale, Florida. And that was another Yurchenko ball, ground off on the board, a layout full twisting Sukahara off. Now she did it well the first time, so all she has to do now is go back there and say, hey look, I've got a good vault under my belt. Now let's just focus in, see if I can polish this one up just a little bit more. Wendy is 18 years old, her hometown, North Florida. Wendy is coached by Kevin and Rita Brown in Florida. And she trains with another well-known gymnast and exceptional vaulter, silver medalist in the world championships, Brandy Johnson. Sometimes having a strong gymnast in the, in the gym with you every day 
pushes you just it a little does bit. it rubs off i trained mm -hmm. for many years with mitch gaylord and tim daggett and it sure does make a big difference when you can train with those guys every day wendy bruce is 17 years of age five feet one and her first vault was 9.675 she's got to do a little bit better if she wants to gain some ground at jenna reardon wendy didn't quite have the lift that jenna had on jenna's second vault so she's going to have to get a little bit more explosive off the horse. Oh, she tucks it in that time, so she's going to the first ball. 9.675. The score for the first vault. We'll wait for the numbers on the second vault as you look at Kevin Brown. We'll take another look at that second vault. In 1989, she won the World Team Trials, World Championship Team Trials in Tempe. You know, she just barely got her fingertips, it seemed, on the horse. And so as a result, she just couldn't get that block, that propulsion, to help her to do that layout full twist. Let's watch her hands as her hands touch the horse. Didn't quite have a solid block on the horse. Seems to me like she's almost just barely on her fingertips. Mm -hmm. Doesn't quite get that real block with the palms of her hands. And ends up having to tuck it in. Now, we knew that Jana Reardon would have a strong vault, and that was the place where she really needed to get ahead of Wendy Bruce because Wendy should outscore in the other three disciplines, barring a fall or a mishap. But, you know, she doesn't have a very, uh, uh, a very big lead, so that, that right. could fare so well for Wendy, but you never know. Jana's a tough gymnast, and uh, if she trains with Bellows, she should be a very consistent one. But then again, you look where Wendy comes from, and this is going to be a... Uh, I think a very good competition between some tough gymnasts. So 9.725 was the score for Jana Reardon. 9.675 is the score for Wendy Bruce. So right now, Jana Reardon has the lead after one rotation. Now let's go over to the men's competition where Tom Schlesinger and Robbie Kiefer are ready to get underway on the pommel horse. Tom was an NCAA all-around champion. He was uh, alternate on the Olympic team in 1988. He's a real veteran. 1988 Olympic team member, where the United States team finished 11th. He was an alternate on that team at the McDonald's American Cup in Fairfax. He finished 13th in the all-around, and at the mixed pairs, he was teamed with Shannon Miller, where he finished 17th in the all-around. He has a 3.98 grade point average and was a recipient of the 1989 NCAA award called Today's Top Six. He's also a GTE academic All-American and wants to become a physician upon graduation. Tom's a very consistent gymnast. Starts with two loops, with two pommel loops, walking all the way across the horse. And back up again. Kind of the same theme to this skill. There's not a lot of variety here so far. Here's his flares. Moving across the horse is very, very difficult without the pommels. Back more up little tiny form break here and there, but he's doing well. Scissors. Now setting up for his dismount. Travel down, flare, and right up to a handstand. Looks a little tired. Tom Schlesinger is coached by Francis Allen and Jim Howard. They are the coaches at the University of Nebraska. Now probably the best part of his routine is as he does his flares, he'll move on the longitudinal axis across the horse, lengthwise across the horse, without touching the pommels. Very difficult having to clear those pommels while you're doing flares. Now his dismount, he travels down to the end of the horse, does a flare, not a real difficult dismount. Tom's a little bit tired here. And so he plays it smart. Back to a handstand. And he says, now let's go to rings. <laughs> 9.55 is the score for Tom Schlesinger on the pommel horse. Pretty fair score for that performance? 17 years old. Yeah, he had, he had difficulty. He had uh, um, that difficult flare skill. And he was, he was fairly consistent. Got a little bit tired at the end. I think the judges saw that. Robbie Kiefer is the challenger to Tom Schlesinger. Robbie Kiefer is a youngster, 17 years of age, currently resides in Austin, Texas. He's coached by Lance King. And Robbie just did a very nice move, working all the way across the horse with and without the pommels, lengthwise. Very difficult. Oh. 30 seconds. Just got off balance. 
Now that's an automatic five tenths of a deduction. There's a sequence up to a handstand and do a scissor move. This pendulum swing that you see here is a required element. Into flares. Oh, he's just just lost his whole composure. A lot of difficulty, but he just has to get some more experience and put some of those hard things together and, and do lots of more routines. He's, he's got a good just career ahead of him, though. Robbie, Robbie Kiefer is 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighs 146 pounds. Yeah, I'm impressed with the level of his, of, his, uh, of his gymnastics. His floor exercise was very, very difficult. And here, he just kind of sits on the pommel. Once you're back, if you don't make an adjustment right away on pommel horse, there's just no way that you can get back on. I think at that point he thought, oh no, look at this. This is a single elimination tournament. I've got to I've hit everything if I'm going to be able to, uh, to beat Tom and move on up. And here I am. I've already made a mistake and just got off here as well. Robbie Kiefer's performance on the pommel horse. Again, the score for Tom Schlesinger on pommel horse was 9.55. 8.6 is the number for Robert Kiefer. So we'll be back with more of the 1990 U.S. Challenge, but first we pause for these commercial messages. Welcome back in the challenge between Tom Schlesinger and Robbie Kiefer. Tom Schlesinger has a lead. His all-around total after two rotations, 19.00. For Robbie Kiefer, 17.85. On the women's side, Jenna Reardon holds a slight edge over Wendy Bruce, 9.725 to 9.675 as the women have completed just one event. And now the women are ready for their second event, which is the uneven parallel bars. And we are looking at Wendy Bruce. And certainly a good event for Wendy. She's the gold medalist in the unevens at the Belgian International Competition. She comes from Browns Gymnastics down in the Altamont Springs down in Florida. Trains with Brandy Johnson. Kip to the high bar. Change. Front giant. Pirouette. Back giant. Another pirouette to a Jaeger Salto down to the low bar. Now it seems like the girls really don't do much in the low bar anymore. They want to get back up to that high bar and do practically a horizontal bar routine. Men's gymnastics. Very difficult. Full pirouette over the top. Double back immediately after that. Well, certainly one of the biggest changes in that apparatus in the most recent years is the fact that they've adjusted the rules so that they can move the low bar so far away from the high bar that you can get those giant circles in there. And, and the low bar is, is actually a lot farther away. Now, here's that pirouette immediately into the Jaeger Salto. Very difficult. Got to be right on after that pirouette, right down to the low bar. My wife was a gymnast, and we were just at a competition recently. She said she walked up to the uneven and said, I can't believe how much just the equipment has changed in yes. the last few years. And even the rebounding ability from the rails now. They're not as stiff pieces of wood that they used yeah, to be. Have fiberglass inside. There's your dismount. Good double back. Sticks it nicely. That should score well. And Wendy Bruce personifies how the sport has grown, showing not only release and regrasp moves, but moves smoothly from bar to bar. And show some of the classic male gymnast moves with the giant circles on the high bar. 9.675 is the score I've been handed. I'm sorry, 9.75 is the score I've been handed for Wendy Bruce, Bruce on the uneven parallel bars. 9.675 was her vault score, and the 9.75 will be added to that as she completes her second event. And now it is time for Jana Bella Caroli's gymnast, Jana Reardon, the 14-year-old out of Salem, Massachusetts, now in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, but had to move away from home to take up gymnastics seriously at Caroli's. Kip to the high bar, pirouette right into a giant, into a reverse hect. Did he touch her? Looked like he touched her. That will count. Another giant. Giant pirouette over the bar, right into a double back. Same discount, nice save. I don't know that he had to touch her. He probably didn't, but you know, better to be safe than sorry. Better to be safe than sorry, and let's take a look. Of course, the judges don't have the luxury of the replay. We do. <laughs> be tough goes. from this angle. Nice good action over it. She's got the bar clean, but Bella touched no. her. Well, I couldn't tell from that angle. He certainly reached in. It looked like he was going to touch her. A lot of good giants. 
Full curl over the top into another giant. Notice how she gets an arch right there at the bottom so she can whip it into the double back. Helps to increase the rotation on the skill like that. Little step in the dismount. Again, she had the lead after one rotation. Not by much, just fractions. 9.725 was her vault versus Wendy Bruce's 9.675. So just 0.05, the difference. We're going to take another look at uh, Jana Reardon's not even parallel bound where Bella Caroli reaches in. Now, she looks like she might be going over to the, lo to the low bar. Bella's there to help her, he and touches he touches her. her. Yeah, and <laughs> that's why she got the score that she got. 9.25. And it was a beautiful routine, but the heavy deduction for Caroli reaching in, but he's much wiser than I in these matters and felt that she needed the extra push right there to get her momentum going. So 9.25 is the score that Jenna Reardon will carry into the third rotation. Again, the score for Wendy Bruce was 9.75. So Wendy Bruce wins the head-to-head -head uneven parallel bars competition. Now the men are continuing on. They are at the still rings. This is Robbie Kiefer. Well, it's funny to see when Bella did touch her, he knew it, and he pulled his hand back as if to say, oh, I didn't do it. I didn't <laughs> do it. But the judges saw it. They were sitting right there. It was a very difficult melt, Robbie did. Back up right straight arm right to a handstand. Now Robbie, you recall, had a major break on his pommel horse, had to dismount. And that's why he received an 8.6 for Pommel Horse, and that really dug a hole for him. And he just had another break there in the rings, had that little counter swing. That's going to cost him as well. He does good skills. He's going to be a very tough gymnast. I mean, he's already a, an excellent performer. He just needs to polish up some of these things. And he's a pike half and half out for his Robbie, and Peter Vidmar, back in 1981, you competed in the U.S. Challenge and received a score of 9.7. And that still is a meet record. No one has scored higher than 9.7 <laughs> in the still rings. Jim Hartung tied it that year, but 9.7 is still the standard to beat on this event as we take another look oh, at Robbie exciting. Kiefer's still ring. Now, here's his dismount. In fact, this is the dismount I used in this competition. You remember? Yeah, wow. Pike Taff and F out. And he takes a little step forward. Did you? Uh, I, I don't uh, think so with a 9-7. Gee, no one will know, I guess. <laughs> I think I did it perfectly. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> I have no idea. Score for Robbie Kiefer, 8.85. So the major break that you saw in the middle of his routine, the judges saw as well. Not a strong showing right now for Robbie Kiefer. And the gap, it looks like, it is widening between Robbie and, and Tom Schlesinger, but uh, now it's Tom's turn to go up in rings and show what he can do. Next up. Tom Schlesinger at the American Cup finished 13th in the all-around, tied for 5th in the all-around in the McDonald's Challenge between the USA and the USSR in Columbus, Ohio. At the Pan American Games in 1987, he was a member of the gold medal team. And Tom Polster inverted hang right to a kip to an L cross. Back kip to an L. The goal on rings is to keep those rings as still as possible, and you're not allowed to touch the straps at all. The hands, the, um, or the arms must be clear. There's an inverted cross. Could be just a tad lower. Right up to a handstand. And that skill was first done in the 1984 Olympics by a gymnast by the name of Yamawaki of Japan. So we call that the Yamawaki. There's a press to a handstand. It's a neat looking move. It's similar to the Whippet, which gymnasts have been doing for quite a while. And another Pike half and half out. Tom so this time Tom stuck it. Very good this one. Tom Schlesinger is doing his part. Nice steady performance with enough difficulty. His scores have been 9.45, 9.55, and he should be right up there with this performance. Now the Whippet is, a, is a similar to this Yamawaki, but you keep on rotating. It's like almost a double front somersault. He pulls it right up to a straddle L. His dismount again is a, is a piked, full twisting double back. You got to really go hard through the bottom. Pulls it around. It's so hard to twist in the piked position. Tom did a good job. And the judges give him some pretty good numbers. 9.40, the ring score for Tom Schlesinger as he moves to the fourth apparatus. We'll be back with more competition at this 1990 U.S. Challenge. But first, we pause for this commercial message.
welcome back after three rotations on the men's side. Tom Schlesinger has widened the lead over Robbie Kiefer. All around total, 28.4 to 26.7, a difference of 1.7. On the women's side, Jenna Reardon against Wendy Bruce. Wendy Bruce has an advantage of .45 after two events. And now we're ready for the third event for the women, and that is the balance beam where Jenna Reardon will be our first competitor. Jana Reardon's scores so far have been 9.725 on the ball, 9.25 on the uneven parallel bars. And once again, the beam is only four inches wide. It's four feet high. And Jana is a little bit larger than some of the, the, the tiny, smaller gymnasts that we see in the sport. She's not real big, but she's not quite as small as, for example, one of her teammates that she trains with, Kim Zameskel, American Cup champion. Five feet two for Jana Reardon, weighs 100 pounds. So obviously 5'2 is not a large person. But when we're dealing with gymnasts who are 4'6, 4'7, and 4'8, she's got quite a few inches on them. There's a nice, nice back handspring back layout sequence. They must do some sort of a series like that, a tumbling series on balance beam. She's right on the mark right now. Now a full turn, like we just saw, is something that uh, people sometimes just don't appreciate, but it's very, very difficult. They must do a 360 degree turn on beam. The 9.25 that she received on the uneven parallel bars is a bit deceptive. Bella Caroli touched her. He may not have had to, but the fact is that he did touch her, and that was a serious deduction. Her score might have been closer to 9.7, 9.75, something like that, had he not reached in. Certainly would have been a much higher score. And that's the good news for her, because obviously he's helping her along, but in future meets when he doesn't have to help her, that's a strong bar routine. And as a gymnast, you have to just live with that and realize, hey, it's my fault this time. Right. I did double back this one. <laughs> and she had a nice solid routine. I think she's going to get the Bella Bear hug. Yep, there it is. <laughs> very, very good routine. That first series was right on the mark, and here's a great view just to look at this. Back handspring, back handspring into a back layout and she's right on the mark. You can see how narrow that balance beam is, just the width of your foot. And here's her double back. You've got to be right on the mark. When you put those feet down to punch for that double back, you've got to be solid on the beam to do that. Your feet have to be right within that center part of those four inches. Little bobble on the dismount. That's a very solid routine. She'll get a good score. A well-deserved score for the 14-year-old, born in Salem, Massachusetts. Family currently resides in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Now, you look at an event like Benos Beam, and sometimes this can make or break a competition. Yes. Sure, Wendy's got a big lead, but all she has to do is, is make one mistake, maybe fall off once, and all of a mm -hmm. sudden, Jana's right back in the money right now. 0.45 is the margin of difference between Jana Reardon and Wendy Bruce. 9.575 is the score that Jana Reardon has been granted for her beam performance. And that certainly puts the pressure on Wendy Bruce. You're right, one fall. And Jenna's right back into this. But Wendy Bruce is not the kind of gymnast who does fall. She's coached by Kevin and Rita Brown in the Fort Lauderdale area in Altamont Springs, a two-year member of the senior national team. And this isn't new ground for Wendy. When she's under the gun, she has to do well. She's done it before. And so now here's a chance for her to show everybody what she can do under that's, a little bit of pressure. That's what I like about Wendy Bruce. She's... She's a real serious competitor and doesn't get riled easily. Nice punch front. Now she doesn't have to do much to regain her lead over Jana Reardon. A 9.15 will do it. But certainly a fall makes us a much tighter race. And those series of leads were done quite well. Many times as they do those required high amplitude leaps, uh, it's enough to throw them off, as much as a, as much as a flipping skill. Two back handsprings, oh, and there's a bobble. The bobble. But in a way that was smart, she knew that she wasn't going to make a back layout if she went for it, and so she said, hey, let's not take five tenths, let's just uh, lose what I would have got uh, for doing that skill. So instead of losing half a point, maybe she only lost just a couple tenths, and that's smart competition. But what about the difficulty factor? 
she still had the bobble, which was obvious. A couple of tents there and a couple of tents for difficulty. Well, it also depends on what else she has in her routine. If mm -hmm. she can afford to leave out that skill because she has other ones that will take its place, well, then she'll be all right. And there's a double back. Good landing. <laughs> That's up for judges. Yes. 9-1-5 is what she needs to maintain the lead over Jana Reardon. I think in the head-to-head -head on the balance beam, if they were giving out medals, the medal would go to Reardon for beam routines. But this is an all-around competition. And that's Kevin Brown. Looks like we could get down all the way to the last event now for Floor to see who wins this one. Now here she does a back handspring, another back handspring. She's a little bit off, and she just says, wait a second, let's not do it, and she just stops. And she stays on the beam. Now that's a deduction. The yes. fact she's got her leg up there, so yes. maybe it would have been. Uh, that's a major. Ball. That's a major bobble. She certainly gets her composure back. This is a difficult dismount. Double tuck. And zeroes in on the landing. And 9.6 is the score for Wendy Bruce on the balance beam. 9.6. So obviously she had enough difficulty. And I stand corrected. I thought Jenna Reardon had the better beam routine. Judges felt otherwise. So in head-to-head -head on the balance beam, the advantage goes to Wendy Bruce, and she maintains her lead over Jana Reardon. Now we're going to go over to the men's competition. It is Tom Schlesinger against Robbie Kiefer. They are going to vault, and in men's competition, it's one time only. OTO, you get one vault, and it counts. <laughs> That's right. Tom does a layout Sukahara with a full twist, hikes in a little bit at the end. But it's a nice, consistent ball, and we'll keep him right up there. He's got a good lead, so he really doesn't have to do much else other than just be consistent, and he'll make it into this next bracket. But in the classroom as well, the University of Nebraska graduate student is maintaining a three-point Good form. Pikes a little bit, tucks his knees a little bit at the end, but, but he had to do that to zero in on the landing. He could have got just a little bit more lift. Could have slammed that horse a little bit harder. Then he could have stayed open. And he wouldn't have to have brought his legs down and, and tucked his knees in just a little bit. But he'll still get a good score. And the good score that he gets is 9.45 for Tom Schlesinger, who currently holds a 1.7 advantage over Robbie Kiefer. You know, Leander, we look at scores like a 9.45 on vault, and we compare that with the 9.6s, the 9.7s, the 9.8s that you'll see in other events in men's gymnastics, and yet consistently across the board, vaulting is the one event that is judged the harshest of all of them. It's just a difficult event now. They've made it very, very hard to get a, a high score, like a 9.899. There's a very powerful Cuervo. It's a handspring with a half turn and then a back flip. There's lots of ways to do that vault. You can do a, a handspring front flip half turn, or a, do the half turn kind of in the middle of it. This is simply a handspring. Does the half turn first. There's the half turn. And then he pulls his legs in on the back flip. Called a Cuervo. Gets a lot of nice distance from the horse. Should score well. And gets a nice score, 9.35, the highest score he's achieved in this uh, round against Tom Schlesinger, the best score of the day. But 9.45 is the number for Tom Schlesinger as he maintains his lead over Robbie Kiefer. Our gymnasts are going to warm up on the next apparatus, and we'll be back with our fourth rotation for the women in a moment. We are back, and the difference between Tom Schlesinger and Robbie Kiefer has now grown to a 1.8 margin in favor of Tom Schlesinger. His all-around total after four rotations, 37.85 versus 36.05. On the women's side, Jenna Reardon and Wendy Bruce are still very, very close. Margin of difference, 0.475. And this could be decided and will be decided on the final rotation for the women, the floor exercise event, where Wendy Bruce, the leader by that margin of 0.475, is about to compete. Pete. Well, Wendy's just going to want to do a consistent job. If she gets, uh, if she gets around a 9.5, then uh, there's really no way that Jenna can catch up. I saw her run off the, run off the cast with a double layout. Let's see if she does it. Now here's where your strategy might come into play. All she has to do is play it safe. And the coach says, no, you go for it. She did it. Nice, nice double layout. Yeah. You know, sometimes though, when you're training a skill over and over again, you have to go for it. Because if you did the easier one, you might 
make a mistake because you're not used to training it. Round up, flip over, take hands, pick, double tuck. I think women's floor exercise is probably the most physically demanding event in, in all of both men's and women's gymnastics. Uh, because it, it's a long routine, you're constantly moving. It's difficult to strategically place your rest parts because you have to use all the dance, you have to have the turns. I'll say I love the way Wendy dances, and I love the choreography. I wish she'd smile more <laughs> and act just a little bit more enjoyable out there with it. She's such a serious kid. Well, maybe with a pass like this coming up, it's kind of hard to loosen up a little bit because she knows she's got to just hit this one more time like that. She does. It's a layout double twist. Not quite as hard as some of the double tops and the double pikes that you might be seeing, but it was a consistent routine. The mount was very, very difficult, and there's just no way, I think, that Jana will be able to catch up. All right, let's help out our audience at home. You say a double layout. Very, very difficult, very difficult mount. The double twister at the end. Not so difficult. A triple twister, maybe. Right, not, would have been. Well, that's correct. Not nearly as difficult. Uh, the first pass is, is is about as difficult as, as some of the skills that are being uh, done today. It's a double back flip in the stretched position. You really have to have just the right punch. You got to really throw your arms and chest back. She whips it around. It is not easy. Mm. And she has a nice nice landing. Takes that little step forward. But her last pass is a layout double twist. This is uh, maybe a sign of fatigue. She's tired. Double twist is not nearly as difficult, and you don't expect to have a difficult uh, dismount or a dismount that is di that is as difficult as the mount. But many times you're seeing girls doing very, very difficult dismounts at the end. This one is not quite as hard as it's being done. And the score that Wendy Bruce received: 9.75. An excellent score for an excellent routine. As Wendy Bruce talks with her coach, Kevin Brown. And since they're not giving Jana scores above Reardon. 10, Jana Reardon cannot win this meet. She needs a, a 10.225. And yet this is a very good event for her. And so uh, just being a, a tough gymnast, she's just going to go out there and, and do her job. Nice. Over flip-flops into a double pipe, very, very consistent. Now, how does that stack up against a double layout? Just as tough, that set? It's not, it's not as difficult as a double layout. Now, she does have a variety of tumbling skills in there by doing the whip-overs, which is the back handspring without the hands. Uh -huh. uh, nonetheless, the, that final flipping skill, the double layout versus the double pipe, you really can't compare the two. And Marta Caroli always has a hand in, that, in developing the choreography of these girls' routines. Another double pike. A little slip. A little slip, but she got her feet back under her. It's a little peppier style, and <laughs> you're seeing a little more smiling out of Jenna Root. Handstand pirouettes. You look at a skill like an aerial, and she uses it like a dance move now, and it was a big trick a few years ago. And now it's just no big deal. It's kind of a way for her to work herself in the corner as she does the twist. <laughs> hey, when I was a kid, if you could do an aerial, you were hot stuff, you know? <laughs> and now we're dismount. Round up that handspring, double tuck. Oh, put your hands down, that's a deduction. Of course, she really didn't have to support her hands. It won't be that bad as if she really fell on them, but they did touch, and that'll hurt. But she gave it her best shot. She's in number 11 seed, going up against the number 2 seed. Nice first tumbling pass. So she does a round off, back handspring, and now a whoop over is like a back handspring, but without the hands. Into another back handspring and into a double pike. It's a very, she does it very well. Nice and crisp. The zero's in on the landing. Now her second pa pass, she does a, a double pike. Doesn't use the whip overs. But as she goes into that landing, it looked like her feet were going to slip right out from under her, under her, but she pulled them in. She comes up, pulls the feet in, and then she lands kind of stiff-legged and has to really throw those feet back. She's lucky she didn't hurt her knees. Last tumbling pass is a double tuck. 
Now, the, the level of difficulty of the dismount compared to the mount is, is always a little bit less, simply because you are really tired at the end of those routines. Puts her hands down, and she just, just couldn't quite keep her chest up to stay on her feet. Well, as we said, it was not possible for her to win the meet, but she did get a 9.375 despite touching with her hands. And I would say the future is very, very bright for Jana Reardon. And that concludes the women's competition. We'll be back with more of the 1990 U.S. Challenge after this. Welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada, and a come-from-behind victory. Wendy Bruce has defeated Jenna Reardon after four rotations. Wendy's all-around total, 38.775. Jenna Reardon, 37.925, the difference of 0.85. Jenna Reardon won the vault. Wendy Bruce won the final three disciplines as she advances to the second round. Now on the men's side of the competition, Tom Schlesinger continues with his domination of Robbie Kiefer. Margin of difference, 2.7, but the men still have one event remaining, and that is the high bar. Right now we are ready for the high bar competition where Tom Schlesinger will mount first. And it's certainly a good event for Tom. He was second place at the USA Championships on Horizontal Bar last year. He's just one of those consistent gymnasts. You just can't ever count on Tom to make a mistake. Full twist over the bar. Another full twist over the bar. Catch with one arm into a one arm ganger. A little close though. Looks like he just kind of slid off his chest there. But he stayed on. Very difficult stoop in to a, to a German giant. We don't see that a lot. In fact, the last gymnast that I knew that did German giants regularly was Kurt Thomas. Solid set, a little close in that uh, one on Ganger, but uh, there's no question that he'll move on to the next round. Absolutely no question. Tom Fussinger with a little bit of trouble. Had a nice set until he got too close there. Well, it's, it, you got to think fast on something like this. He does a yeah. full turn over the bar, does another one, and he says, okay, this isn't enough. Now i got to let go of the bar again, do a fly with a half turn. Let go a little bit too late, got really close to the bar, and whew, just skimmed right off the bar. This mounts a double layout. Compared with, with what's being done now, it's not an incredibly good uh, Perfect angle. 9.55, the score for that high bar routine, giving him an all around total of 56.8. Robbie Kiefer. Next up. Is up next, and will not be able to score enough points to win this meet. Well, we're going to see a lot of Robbie in the future. He's a good gymnast. Uh, I like what he does, and he looks good doing it, has a good style. He probably says, hey, look, I'm not going to make it, and I've got nothing to lose. Let's see what I can do here in high bar. Nice reverse heck into another reverse heck. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. You know, that's very difficult to do three release moves in a row. He did the two reverse hecks. We call those a, a, a Tukachev. Two Tukachevs. Let's see what happens. I think he just got a little bit too close on the first, uh, on the second Tukachev. The first one's nice and gets him nice and far away from the bar. Second one, he gets a little bit close and he says, "Now I got to do a flyaway." I just was, just wasn't yeah. quite around there. Now I think over time, it, maybe a, a more seasoned gymnast might say, "You know, you know, I'm too, I'm too close to the bar. There's no way I can do it. I'm just not going to do it." We're back to live action. Maybe he would have left it out. He remounts here. There's his inverted giants. Getting ready for his dismount as a pirouette. He dismounts with just a half in, half out. <laughs> next time, next time, I'll be better. A growing experience for Robbie Kiefer. Had another chance to throw his sets for the judges. And anytime you can do that, you're a better gymnast for it. Take a look at his dismount. He dismounts with a full twisting double back flip. It's nice and high, sees the ground all the way down, and zeroes in on the landing. So Robbie Kiefer needs a 12.25. Obviously, the judges don't give numbers that are that high. He gets a 9.2. We'll be back with a recap, but first this.
Welcome back. No surprise here. Tom Schlesinger, the winner over Robbie Kiefer. His all-around total, 56.8 to 53.75. A margin of difference, 3.05. Tom Schlesinger won all six disciplines. Again, a reminder on the women's side, Wendy Bruce won three of the four events that the women competed. Her all-around total was .85 better than Jenna Reardon. So Wendy Bruce and Tom Schlesinger advance, and they are both with all Peter Vidmar. Well, I'm with Wendy and Tom. Wendy, you had a, a great competition. Got off uh, to a good start, though. You're a little bit behind. Then you came on at the end. What happened on beam, though? Looks like you were going for your uh, a back layout, and then what happened? Um, I was going for backhands for cancer layout, and I was really crooked, and I didn't throw it, and kind of had a lot of wobbles. <laughs> well, you played it smart, and you stayed in the beam, and then good luck for the next round. Tom, on high bar, looks like you're doing just a perfect routine. All of a sudden, you got a little bit close on that bar at the end. Yeah, I guess I pulled in a little bit. Kind of caught my finger underneath the bar, so I had a little trouble on my kip, but I made it. Gonna be okay for the next round? Yeah, I think so. I have my health, so that's good. All right, well, good luck. And thank you, Peter Vidmar. Peter and I will be back in just a moment. We'll recap all of the scores and explain what happens next for these gymnasts here at Cashman Field Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. Welcome back. The first round of the 1990 U.S. Challenge is complete. The survivors are Mike Reconelli, Bob Stelter, Jeff Lutz, John Roethlisberger, Dan Zimfer, and Tom Schlesinger. And the real competition could be an interesting one with Jeff Lutz and John uh, Roethlisberger. They're ranked uh, number three and number four going into it. Should be a tight one. Now on the women's side of the competition, top seed Jenny Esther survived, as did Kim Zameskel, Stephanie Woods, Shari Knight, Tracy Cole, and as we just saw, Wendy Bruce, all going into the second round. And the real sleeper's got to be Kim Zameskel. Even though she's seated number six, she just won the recent American Cup. She's clearly one of the best gymnasts in the United States. And we'd like to remind you that you should watch in your cable guides to see when the 1990 U.S. Gymnastics Challenge will continue with round number two, Jenny Esther against Kim Zemesco, Mike Racanelli against Bob Stelter. And that wraps up the first round of the 1990 U.S. Gymnastics Challenge. I'm Leander Riley for Peter Vidmer and our crew here in Las Vegas, Nevada. So long, everyone. <laughs>